Okay, so one of the new features in Revit 2024, I believe is where this started, maybe 23, is that our topo surfaces are now topo solids. And one of the really nice things that that presents for us is the, the ability to quickly generate and fabricate a topography model, a physical model, off of these files because it now essentially has volume. Um, and we could have taken a topo surface and done a little bit of modeling work and turned that into a solid object, but now it is super simple. And so this is something that we're having students do constantly in terms of being able to visualize outside of the computer um, this kind of model. And again, the bigger the printer, um, the bigger the topo surface, and some 3D printers are, are you know, becoming huge. Um, and even then, we'll show a quick technique in terms of how to um, print multiple sections as well. So this is the site that I'm working on um, in the rep class that I'm teaching right now. And first thing that I'm going to do is I don't need quite this much area. Um, it's nice to see sort of these hills in the background, but I really want to isolate a portion of this. I don't need um, a 10 hour three dimensional print. I need something that I can get out of the computer quickly and at a scale where I can see this sort of micro house that I'm working on right now as well. So that's about a 12 foot by 20 foot, 240 square foot house that we're developing. So I'm going to come down with nothing selected. Again, my properties are my view properties. So I'm going to select section box, which does exactly what you think it is, which allows you to section out a portion of the site that is relevant so that I can print this at a slightly larger scale. So I'm reducing the amount here. Um, and at the same time, this is a great tool to section out a model. So you can imagine if this was taking up the entirety of my print bed and it was still at a scale that's too small for my project, for what I wanted to either show a client or um, professor or whatever, um, I can use that section box tool even further to segment, subdivide, and send pieces to a 3D printer. And I would do that by going to duplicate the view and rename. So let's start with this being print NW for northwest corner, right? So I've got north on my compass here, west. So what I'm going to do is reduce this down and slide that over, right? So let's get just enough so that my little micro house is in that view. Okay, so that is the first piece that I would send to the 3D printer. I can duplicate this view, duplicate, rename, print, and this would be north east. Okay, and so to make sure that these match up perfectly, all that I need to do is select my section box. I'm going to smash the section box two dimensional on my first pass, deselect, reselect, and I'm going to expand it from this direction. So now I have that that I would print, and I would have this piece that I would print. And then we can, we'll do this one more time. So duplicate, duplicate. So this one would be print, and this would be southeast. And so now I can just smash it this direction, deselect, rotate, select, and pull my section box out that direction. So again, I can really quickly, really easily build those things up, send them one at a time to a printer, and then puzzle them back together outside of the printer. So let's go back to our default 3D view where I started, and let's look at how I would send this larger piece from here to a 3D printer. Specifically, I'll be using uh, Prusa. Uh, if you are not using a Prusa, I think you're crazy. We've got six of them here at our university. They run nonstop, uh, and they just don't fail. They just keep printing, and our success rate on prints is really, really high. It's usually something wrong with the file, not something wrong with the printer. Uh, they're amazing. So we need an STL file, so I'm going to go export CAD formats STL. Um, this units matters, but 
in this case where I know that I'm going to scale this down. I think I'm going to print this at one inch equals 200 feet. I know that if I select millimeters, it will send it one to one. Um, most 3D printing softwares, most slicers are going to use a base unit of millimeters. Revit uses, at least in the States, it uses feet and fractional uh, inches as a base unit. I already have a conversion system built. Um, so sticking with that as a default will work just fine. Okay, so we're going to click save and I'm going to give that a name. Arc 222 site print. And that is a stereo lithography or STL file. So then I'm going to open up Prusa Slicer. Inside of Prusa Slicer, I'm going to go File, Import, STL. So I'm using just the default, not the Imperial units, but just Import STL. So that is my ARC-222 site print. And it's going to come in obviously way too big, right? But it's already done one step, and that is every foot right now, um, Prusa Slicer is interpreting as a millimeter. So that's why this isn't several hundred feet by several hundred feet. Um, it's several hundred millimeters. In fact, it is uh, 686.49 millimeters by, uh, you can see the rest of them, okay? So what I need to do is convert this to a scale factor that I know. And I've got an Excel spreadsheet to do that, um, which is super convenient. Um, so this simply works by saying one inch is equal to, in this case, let's use 200 feet. So if I look at this cell right here, it's essentially looking at my scale factor, converting it millimeters to feet, and giving me, I need to input 12.69% as my final value inside of Prusa Slicer to get this model printing at one inch equals 200 feet. So if I come back to Slicer, uh, my scale factor will be 12.69. And so now I have this at exactly one inch equals 200 feet. And I can see I'm getting enough detail. I can see the road, the drive that I've got in, and I can see the building. So my next step is, uh, and again, these are just rough files that we're doing, so I'm perfectly happy with the draft setting. Um, I can decrease my infill down to something very minimal, 5%. I'm going to run this as slice. I'm going to check and make sure that my layering makes sense and all of that is looking really good. And this is sort of a nice added feature of the Topo models when you're 3D printing them because it's a horizontal printing process. You actually get sort of another indicator of what the Topo lines are doing. Um, these models look very similar um, to a Topo model that we'd build out of cardboard or something like that, which is nifty. Um, from here, we are exporting the G code. So I'm just going to save that to my desktop. From there, it depends on what 3D printer you're running. Um, what we end up doing is we copy that G code over to an SD card that goes to our printer, and essentially you hit go and um, watch for that first layer to adhere correctly. And then in this case, that is a print that's going to take one hour and 28 minutes. Easy peasy.